Okay, today we're going to talk about the Overwatch PTR patch for February 26, 2019, which includes in it a new hero and also some other changes on the PTR. I've got a nice post over here that's going to have all the new hero stats and everything in it, so we're going to, we're going to look at that in a minute, but first we're going to look at the patch overall, and then the hero. So first off, general updates. Armor, beam type weapon damage is now reduced by 20% when hitting armor, and damage over time effects are no longer mitigated by armor. So, this will be of very much importance to people on Reddit who will tell you every patch, or every other patch if we're feeling a little reserved, will tell you that tanking is basically dead. Right, and which has never yet been true, but still they say it every time. Because now they get to go, hey, Beam type weapon damage is reduced by 20%, so fuck Symmetra, am I right? But on the same by the same token though, Venom Mine is gonna hit you for full damage now, so basically tanks are dead, because now Venom Mine's just gonna shred ya. You know, am I right? Anyway, damage boost. Damage boost is now applied when a projectile is fired rather than when it hits a target. So of most relevance to fi to uh, fire strike basically, because you need to actually damage boost Reinhardt before he uses Fire Strike, rather than going, oh, he's used Fire Strike, so I'll damage boost him now. That doesn't work anymore. And I mean, I guess it makes more sense, like, logically, right, that it needs to be before the weapon's used, rather than just before the projectile hits them. But, like, in a gameplay sense, I think it makes more sense for it to just be before the projectile hits them. But it does make more logical sense that it needs to be before the weapon is fired. Basically, like, sucks to be Reinhardt. It's not going to affect that many other people. Might affect, like, um, Ash or, uh, with the bomb, I'm talking, and, um, Hanzo, but... Not really. Like, you know, just kind of a thing that happened. Knockback distance is now more consistent. Heroes that are flying can now be knocked back and slowed. So, sucks, suck it far, basically. Sound, a new sound plays when you land a hit while damage boost. And a new, play, new sound plays when you land a hit, but it doesn't do any damage. That one better be the most depressing sound in the entire world. I w if it's gonna hit and do zero damage, I wanna hear a sad trombone for every single fucking hit, to be honest with you. So, hero updates. Nano boost, heal reduced by 50, from 300 to 250, which is, you know, it's still a fucking lot of health to recover instantly, but hey, you know, nano boost does basically go you don't die right now, so I guess now it's you don't die, but slightly less good than it was previously. You might still die, but you also probably still won't die, as long as it actually goes through. Doomfist's gotten buffed, so these are the beginnings of the end times, because uh, basically that tells me they've looked at Doomfist and gone, hmm, Doomfist's pretty bad, so we better start buffing Doomfist until he's not as bad anymore. And as we all can remember, god, Doomfist was just fucking depressing to play against a while ago. What? Well, not even that long ago. Wasn't he just the absolute worst? So, uh, get ready for that one to happen, you know. Might take a few more patches, but it'll not be long before Doomfist gets to have his turn again as, like, the strong hero. Because that's how Blizzard always likes to do it. Everybody gets to take a turn. Everybody gets a turn on the Xbox at Blizzard. There's just... Sometimes it takes that hero a while to get round there. Some heroes, like Torbjorn and Symmetra, are still waiting for their turn on the Xbox. But one day it'll come when they get reworked again. Yeah, one of these days, one of these days. Hanzo, Sonic Arrow, detection radius increased from 7 meters to 9 meters. Who cares? Lucio, Sonic Amplifier, sound wave now counts towards offensive assists. Okay. McCree, fan the hammer damage, reduced from 55 to 50. And Deadeye, damage per second increased from 275 to 550 after locking onto targets for 2.5 seconds. So... Deadeye, I don't think really matters much either way, but, you know, sure, that's, that's nice. The numbers went up by a big num by a big amount, so that's very satisfying to see. But Fan the Hammer's a little bit less good. 
but only by, you know, five less damage per shot. So six shots, 25 overall, you know? Eh. Eh, eh, mm, eh. It's actually a uh, 30 overall, isn't it? Math is hard, because five would be 25, whatever. It's five damage less good over a uh, light like per bullet, which is meh. If you get hit by Fan the Hammer, you're still not going to be happy about it. The context for this was apparently that because they reduced the effectiveness of armor, there needs to be less. There don't need to be as many things that can kill tanks. But I mean, no, I like they didn't nerf like Reaper or anything in here. So whatever. You, na you, you nerf Fan the Hammer, it doesn't suddenly bring tanks all the way back up again after nerfing the armor, does it? But they're like, oh, the beam-type weapons, though. Yeah, Symmetra's really gonna suck it, isn't she? Yeah. And Zarya, I mean, the thing is with Zarya, though, is if she's high charge, it doesn't matter. She's gonna fucking murder you all the same. May, Endothermic Blaster. Primary fire damage increased from 2.25 to 2.75 from 45 damage per second to 55 damage per second which isn't nothing like that's 10 percent that's a uh, 10 percent that's definitely not how math works that's 10 more per second which you know kind of is one of those things that kind of sounds like meh whatever but you know it's it's not nothing she'll kill someone quicker and um i'm not sure the exact break point on it because i haven't done the math but it brings her a little bit closer to being able to, like, consistently kill a 250 health target after they get frozen. Um, it probably isn't enough to guarantee it every single time, but I haven't done the math, so I wouldn't exactly know. But it does make her a little bit more consistent versus, like, Reaper, um, Doomfist, uh, Bridget. You know, 250 health, a little bit easier to kill them when you do more damage per second, but... And then the trade-off is her health, wall health got reduced from 500 to 400, which is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, basically nothing. Because, yeah, it makes it easier to destroy, but I mean... Come on. Who cares, really? Like, that's not gonna make much difference to May overall. But 10 damage per second, you know, maybe, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's not incredible, but it's still a pretty good, like, buff to get overall. Moira, Biotic Grass, peel over time duration increased from 3 to 4 seconds, and the total healing increased by 15. So the regen is just a little bit better. And I mean, I thought I never had any issue with the regen anyway, because 50 health over the 3 seconds was enough to heal up chip damage basically anyway, but hey, now it does 15 more, so it's a little bit better at healing up chip and poke damage. The reach is just an objective buff, so that's nice, though I don't think it's a buff anybody will ever actually like notice to be honest with you it's one of those like very subtle effects that i don't think will matter orissa fusion driver movement speed penalty reduced when firing reduced from 50 percent to 30 percent which is a fairly beefy reduction in the movement speed penalty and uh i don't think it's going to make any difference to orissa's overall balance but it is definitely nice There'll be less, slightly less Arissas who die while backpedaling while firing, just because they're a little bit faster. 20% is, you know, it's a decent reduction, but, uh, you know, not gonna do anything to the actual, like, balance of Arissa overall. And then overnight, oh shit, Arissa suddenly overpowered. Well, that's me shown, isn't it, I suppose? Farah, rocket launcher, minimum damage explosion increased from 16.25 to 20. So, just an objective buff. Nice, does a little bit more damage. Um, they did nerf Farah's, like, splash damage fairly decently not that long ago, so obviously they went, eh, it was a little bit too much, let's bring it a little bit back up again. Which is nice compared to how Blizzard usually goes with things. Remember when they were trying to, like, subtly, um, adjust, uh, Mercy's damage boost, where they weren't, like, I 50%, or it was like 30%, 50%, and then they went, oh, that didn't work. Eh, fuck it, just put it back to the original again. Eh, you know, could have tried like an incremental number in between these two points, but hey, I guess, you know, just scrap the whole idea entirely. You know, obviously that wasn't going to work out. So it's nice that they've just gone, maybe if we just adjust it a little bit, rather than completely reverting the change we made previously. So Soldier76, who gets his damage adjusted what feels like Probably every two or three patches, to be honest with you, is getting his damage adjusted very slightly again. Damage increased from 19 damage per shot to 20 damage per shot. And 
The thing is with Soldier is that, like, you look at that and you go, it's a damage increase of one, right, per bullet. Who gives a shit? But he's got a machine gun, so it's the kind of thing that adds up pretty quickly. So it is just an objective buff, and he'll kill people not massively quicker, but if you were a Soldier player, one of the few that remained, you'll notice the difference, I'm sure. Sprint delay before you can fire the weapon after using Sprint reduced from 0.5 seconds to 0.3 seconds. And... I think that that is like low key one of the best changes in the entire patch because that's actually like it's one of those things that again doesn't seem like anything but if you played soldier you're gonna notice how much more quickly you can fire the weapon after you've been sprinting because it's a like, 0.5 seconds is a pretty long time uh in terms of recovery i guess mean, you know not mass it's half a second but like now it's gone from half of a second to a third of a second so You'll notice if you played Soldier, like low-key, great change. But then the real change, the real change though, Tactical Pfizer can now target Riptire. Just like Junkenstein's Revenge from all those moons ago, now you can kill the Riptire with Tac Visor. Isn't that incredible? Um, I think that you'll basically still never really see that happen, as long as the Junkrat isn't doing something really stupid with his tire, but if you're in a position where you can use Tac Visor on the Rip Tire, you will kill it pretty quickly. Especially since it's now, uh, you know, 20 damage per second, doesn't take many shots then anymore to, uh, or well, it, take, it will take the same amount of shots, but yeah, it's 20 damage per second, you don't have to shoot it many times to kill it. So, if you're in that position, great, it'll also target Immortality Field, which is what happens, like, Immortality Field is what happens when you, when you're balancing a hero and you mix up what their ultimate and their second ability was, I feel like, because I feel like, I feel like those two abilities got messed up, but we'll get back to that, we'll get to that when we actually get over to the new hero. Sombra, hack cooldown is reduced by half when hacking a health pack. Fantastic change, also. Because hack's got, like, a pretty beefy cooldown on it, and now you use it, to hack the health kit, so, you know, the utility aspect of it. No problem. It's half the cooldown now. Fantastic change. Great. Torbjorn. Base health increased by 50 armor. So, 250 total health. And overload armor gain reduced by 50 to compensate. So, just basically an objective buff to Torbjorn. I mean, overload, overload's a little bit less good now, sure. But, I mean, the trade-off is you just have 50 more health. Which, when you're an easy hero to kill, like Torbjorn is, you know, pretty easy to hit guy, giant head hitbox, like, 50 extra health, nothing to sneeze at. Widowmaker, also low-key, one of the best changes in the patch. First off, reveals enemy health bars, whatever, irrelevant. Now cancelled on death. Infrasight lasts fucking forever. So now if you can kill Widow, doesn't last forever, which is fantastic news. If the Widowmaker uses it well, like, you won't be in a position to actually, like, punish her and, like, end the effect early or anything, but if the Widow's bad, she's now got another way to be bad, because I've seen plenty of Widows still die, like, use Infrasight before they die. Now, hey, it's just gone. So, that's also a fantastic change. Wonderful, because Infrasight lasts so long and it's a very strong effect as well right i guess i don't want to poke my face around a corner for the next 15 seconds strong right so like great change fantastic more counterplay always good and this is also one of the best changes in the patch there's a lot of best changes in the patch today aren't they it was it aren't there it was a good it was a good patch evidently wrecking ball adaptive shield no longer cancels roll mode just a massive quality of life thing for uh, Wrecking Ball, isn't it? Like, way easier to use it now. Will make him more annoying to kill, um, no doubt, seeing as even with having to come out of roll mode to use the adaptive shield, like, he was still pretty hard to kill, honestly, as long as he wasn't doing something really stupid. So now he's just even harder to kill, which is aggravating for somebody like Wrecking Ball. But also, man, so just 
makes so much more intuitive sense as an ability, doesn't it? Because I always thought that it doesn't really make any sense you have to come out of roll mode to use the adaptive shield. It feels like this is how it should have always been to me. But hey, we got there in the end, didn't we? And then we got bug fixes. Bleh, 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 bleh. Who cares? So let's go over to the hero, huh? Which is not going to fit properly. Let me just slide that over a little bit. Hey, look at that. So, Baptiste. Primary fire, biotic rifle. Three shots burst, 25 damage per bullet. So, and they've got we got some gifts as well, so we can show you what that looks like. So it's got a bit of recoil to it as well, but I mean, yeah, not overly so. It does like pretty respectable damage, uh, especially by like healer standards, right? Like he he does pretty good stand, pretty good damage. Doesn't heal, 45 bullets per mag, so fucking huge clip, but also probably has a really long reload. And has damage fall off starting at around 20 meters, which is quite long still. That's longer than McCree's fall off damage, I'm pretty sure. Whose is like 17 meters, something like that, and then it starts. So, pretty good weapon overall. Secondary fire, shoots a grenade that heals teammates for 60 health, 10 grenades per magazine, 2-ish meter, meter range, and no effect on self. So, that doesn't make any sense to me, that it doesn't heal himself when he uses it, given that it's a grenade. But I guess they don't want, like, they don't want his playstyle to be run up into teammates, start firing grenades at feet, and be hard to kill, right? So I guess, you know... Um, not, like, huge healing, really, like, but still, like, it'll be better than Mercy's probably as well. It, it's AoE as well, so yes, it will be, but, um, he, he's got a very, um, he's a very damage-centric support, and he's got, like, some pretty good utility to him, but, um, his weapon, by support standards, is really good, as far as I'm, like, really, really good, um, I do think that, uh, without spoiling my end thoughts on this too much, I do think that uh, our man here is going to end up being really fucking strong and going to be the one that gets nerfed. I think he's going to be the Bridget that gets nerfed for the next, like, three patches. Or more, in Bridget's cases. In Bridget's case, rather. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, both ammo types reload when reloading, which, you know, would be really awkward if you had two different reloads, so it makes sense. Left shift, regenerative burst, 15 second cooldown starting when hitting the button. Heals anyone in his radius when starting the ability for 5 seconds for a total of 150 question mark HP and a 10 meter radius. Uh, for re reference, Lucio Aura before the range buff. So, 10 meters is pretty big. And, you know, 150-ish health, I guess. Given that the cooldown starts when you use the ability and it heals you for 5 seconds, that basically means the, the ability only really has a 10 second cooldown, because its effect is active for 5 seconds of its 10 second cooldown. So, 150 health regenerating on like a 10 second cooldown. Pretty good. I mean, he's got, he's got some uh, decent AoE heals, and this is also how he heals himself, because it also works on himself if you've seen the, uh, like the hero reveal and all that. So... Cool ability, you know, nice utility. Not gonna knock anybody's socks off or anything, but nice to have. Immortality field, 20 second cooldown, starting when the drone is deployed. Deploys a drone, which makes it impossible to lose the last 20% of HP for all heroes within its range. If a player is already below 20% HP, they are healed up to 20 HP, lasts 8 seconds, line of sight based, I would hope. Drone can be destroyed, has 250 health. Drone can be hacked, which disables it completely, and has a 6 meter radius. So it's a very strong effect, right? Like, it's one of those things where as soon as you see this guy use the immortality field, you're gonna want to destroy that drone as quickly as is physically possible. Because, goddamn, 8 seconds of can't die is very, very bad. Very, very bad for all, all parties involved. The uh, immediate thing I think of is, damn, this guy's going to be really strong with Bastion. Because if you just have, like, and I'm like, probably as the off healer, because you, you would want still one of the other healers. But, like, you're on, like, a Bastion comp, so, like, Orisa, Roadhog, Bastion, pick a DPS you want. 
maybe even just three healers to be honest with you seeing as we can like super rely on bastion in this case and then you got like anna baptiste you know batista is what i'm going to call him from now on um and batista and it's like well if they break the barriers i can just put this drone down and hey now bastion can't die so they have to get rid of the drone first which is uh very obnoxious He'll also probably, as a result, also be pretty good at stalling objectives as well. Does give more use to Sombra, being one of the more reliable ways to remove the immortality field. Um, just, like, if they're, if they're gonna run that Bastion, that Bastion comp I just talked about right there, pick Sombra. Just pick Sombra and Emp as soon as the Immortality Field gets used, or beforehand, like, you know, then he can't use the Immortality Field, but boy, would it feel bad if he's like, alright, Panic mode, immortality field, and then you emp. God, he... Batista will be just the saddest boy in the entire world at that point. So will Bastion, actually, incidentally. But very strong ability. And um, we'll have to see how... Like, because this is an extraordinarily strong effect. So we'll have to see, in practice, how easy it is to break the drone once it gets deployed. Because, you know, like... Orisa's bongo is very easy to break, so if the immortality field ends up being as easy to break as that, then hey, it won't be overwhelmingly powerful. And it'll still be a powerful effect, but it'll require like some thought in how you use it, uh, which is how it should be for such a strong effect. But uh, we'll have to see in practice how easy it ends up being to destroy the immortality field once it actually gets put down. But uh, I, I posit if you get really good at Batista, you'll see massive returns on investment. Because, uh, you know, he's a healer that's going to require some finesse to play. Which is good, because I feel like most healers overall are too easy to play. So I, I appreciate there being another, like, high skill cap uh, healer, basically. Because the only other, like, difficult to play support really is Anna, and that's only really because of the aim requirement. So, my, my dream is that this man is very strong, and also, you know, requires skill to play. Because you then... It's fine if they're hard to play, uh, if they're really strong, as long as they're also hard to play. See Sombra. So, my, my dream is that he ends up being strong, but also difficult to play is ultimate amplification matrix projects a barrier which doubles all healing and damage or damaging projectiles or bullets by allies that pass through it can be rotated by pressing the button again like maze wall size is about the same as ryan's shield but much less wide and we can you know we should look at the uh, gif for it shouldn't we because this is one of those things that might be hard to visualize and that's the amplification field and uh, if you watched the um, reveal of the hero's abilities, uh, you'll have seen Tracer just absolutely fucking annihilate a Roadhog through this thing. Uh, Tracer being a very high DPS hero, so when you then increase that damage more, it's, uh, you know, when you double her DPS, it ends up being a really powerful effect. So, is destroyed by Emp, so yet more reason to pick Sombra. And last seven to eight seconds. It's, do you not like time it specifically? Whatever, anyway. So, very strong effect, but requires some finesse to use. Because this is one of those ultimates where, depending on how you use it, it will either be the most disgusting thing you've ever seen in your life, or completely worthless. So, you know, with between this, I, I still feel like this... And amplific and uh, immortality field are on the wrong buttons, to be honest with you. But um, both are still quite strong effects, so I guess you know. Um, the amplification matrix is very a very novel take on the damage boost, isn't it? Because it's the only one that isn't just like directly buffs the person. This one actually needs to be aimed as well, so. Positioning on both Batista and his Matrix will be very important to how good you actually are at this hero, um, as, long, as well as the drone. So, 
you gotta think about it. You gotta think about what you're gonna do with this guy. And then passive exo boots, hold crouch to charge up a jump. Charge, charge will stay until one second after the moment you let go. Can be partially jam charged. Blah, blah, blah. Cannot be charged mid mid air. That would be stupid if you could charge it mid air. And goes really high. 10 meters max. It does look like he goes really high, doesn't it? He, this guy's really good at basketball, though he did cheat a little bit, didn't he? So, uh, cool passive, you know, unique effect. I like it. So I, I, I dig his design. I think uh, he's the most different healer we've seen thus far. And I, I enjoy the unique take on the damage boost because it's one that actually requires some thought to use and because it can be destroyed by imp it still has like counterplay as well as the counterplay of well just don't stand in line of sight at the fucking wall right but it's very unique it's a very interesting design i feel the same way about him as i did when uh they really revealed hammond where i was like this design is like fantastic very cool hero um hammond i i was uh i i was very uh on the hammond train before he came out then so not so much so after he came out but i don't see any way that uh batista doesn't end up being strong just because he has so many like strong effects attached to him i think the guy is definitely an off healer i don't feel like his healing is big enough slash consistent enough to be a main healer but i could be wrong we could we could end up seeing like this but also given that like he's got a really good gun right like you want to take advantage of his left click as well i feel like this is the guy that you pick as the off healer because he's got like decent healing sure but the off supports are always about like the utility they bring and the uh, extra damage they bring to a team more than anything else. See Zenyatta. So when I look at this guy, I go, this is a guy who can heal, sure, but like you want to pick him because of the damage and utility he brings to the shield because both his E and his R are very strong effects and his gun is pretty good, right? Like his gun is <laughs> it's honestly better than some DPS, to be honest with you, right? Like... It's very good. Um, I'm glad they didn't go, hey, the grenades also damage enemies if they hit them, because boy, would that have been stupid. Um, but yeah, he's a really cool hero. I think he's going to end up being strong, though I do think you'll need to know how to play him, because I feel like a really strong, a really good player is going to just seem absolutely overpowering. Like You're going to feel like there's nothing you can do against this guy. But a really bad one is going to feel worse than useless. He also is one of those... Uh, this is how I felt when they released Anna and Moira. Where I feel like they've been designing supports in a way that deliberately appeals to DPS players. Uh, at least with the ones post-release, right? Like, pre like, when the game came out, you know, we had Mercy, Lucio, Zenyatta, right? Like... It was, it was not incredible uh, what we had for healers when the game first came out. Fortunately, Anna came out not long after release. Um, like those, like the supports we had at release, they were like they were capital H healers, right? And then Zenyatta was the one that like appealed to DPS, and then Lucio was the one off doing his own thing, right? But like since release, it's like we've had the sniper. We've had Moira, who gives them the good suck, and then we've had Bridget, so who was more of a, a appeal to tank players more than in the DPS. But with this guy as well now, it seems like they are like, all right, we got to get more people to pick healers because no one wants to. How do we do that? We've got to make them so that DPS players will want to play them. Because let's be real, like we're not trying to take people out of the tank pool. We're trying to take people out of the healer, out of the DPS pool, and put them in the healer pool, right? So it's like, eh, we'll release the one that's a sniper, because then maybe we'll get the Widowmaker players to play her, right? Didn't happen, but you know, whatever. 
Yeah, Moira. Yeah, that'll get that'll get some DPS players over here. Look, she does damage. Look, she has to do damage to refresh her healing resource. You guys love doing damage, right? You do love doing damage. Hmm. And then there's this guy who just has a gun, right? It's like the uh, of the zenith of that whole process where they're just like, all right, this one just has a gun. Like, he just, he shoots people. Okay, will you please play a healer now? This one just has a fucking burst assault rifle. Please pick this healer. The, it, it feels like that to me. Um, but what will actually, like, if that does end up happening, they just won't do any healing, right? Like, the DPS players, the like, like the insta-lock Widowmaker player that suddenly decides to play this guy is not is not gonna actually do any healing. They're gonna go, it's gonna be like when they go, all right, so I have to pick a tank, but I don't really wanna pick a tank. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna pick Roadhog. I'm gonna pick D.Va, you know? They're gonna go, all right, so I have to pick a healer, but I don't really want to be a healer. So I'll just pick Batista. And then they'll think I'm a healer. Oh, but joke's on them. I don't even have my right click bound to anything. <laughs> the most healing you're going to get is when I use Immortality Field. But that's going to be to keep me alive when I jump into them. Right. Think about it. If I put the Amplification Matrix on the enemy team, there's no way they can possibly avoid the damage from it. Think about it. Think about it. So I do think his design is really cool. I like it a lot. Um, I'll definitely try him when he comes out. I haven't played that much Overwatch lately, to be honest with you, because the game is so very tiring to play. But when he comes out, I'll definitely come over, try him out again, see how it goes, because uh, I do think he's he's very cool design. Mostly just because his E and R are very unique abilities basically um also regenerative bursts something i just want to point out is that when people were like how can we make mercy good right uh, the idea thrown around a lot was let's give mercy an e and let's give her and basically everyone was like let's give her some variation of regenerative burst right like i saw so many ideas for mercy's e get thrown around that like let's have her like bang her staff on the ground and it does this like burst heal or this like regeneration over time effect in a circle around her all right and so hey turns out jeff was sitting there like oh we can't do that that's already taken for the other one don't worry they'll find out in like three years when we get there you know um i guess like so hey it showed up somewhere it showed up somewhere just not on the hero people wanted it to show up on um, so yeah, very cool hero. I like his design a lot. I think he'll end up being strong, but difficult to play. So, very good patch overall, though. I like it. Uh, a lot of best changes were in this patch, apparently, so. Good stuff, good stuff. Let's look at the immortality field as well. Seeing as, you know, we should, right? Oh, so he, like, throws it out. It looks like it should be easy to destroy. To destroy. I know it doesn't actually have a crit box on it. Um, even though it looks like if you hit, like, the yellow part, it would have a crit box. Apparently it doesn't. Um, you know, it's line of sight base, so you can't just, like, chuck it next to a wall and have it, like, do the effect. But, I mean, if you're standing in, like, a choke point, please do not play this fucking Widowmaker GIF. Please. So, like, if you're stood, like, in, like, a choke point laid out similarly to this... If, you, like, you got, like, an Orisa comp, you know, which is the one I really see this guy working with is the Orisa team. Is you put it right here, and then, hey, everybody's standing right here in front of the choke point. Great. They're all fucking not gonna die now. And you can't really hit it without actually physically coming through the choke point. So, in that case, it's just, like, eight seconds of we can't die, which is really fucking obnoxious um less good on payload maps uh certainly but i mean you know i'm picturing like some of the payload maps in my mind and i can still see places you'd do it because like dorado commonly the fight ends up like on the first checkpoint is right under the bridge you just put it on the behind the wall next to the bridge hey my team can't die now for eight seconds and you have to come in to this immortality field if you want to break it basically unless you got someone who can go around the side but either way you got to go out of your way to actually get to this immortality field so um it also feels like 
This is probably just incidental, but it also feels like this guy was kind of like, hey, let's make Sombra a better hero by adding someone to the game that Sombra counters, right? Because, like, Sombra counters this guy being the only effect in the game that can remove the amplification matrix and she's got one of the fastest and most reliable methods of disarming the uh, immortality field as well because if you have to basically put it behind cover to get any use out of it hey someone that's just stealthed and behind your team when you deploy it is going to be able to go doo -doo 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 -doo, and it's gone and it's gone no more immortality for you anymore right so probably just incidental that it worked out that way because they were probably designing this guy way ahead of time but it ended up being that way where it's like hey sombra counters this guy i think his design is very cool though let me know what you think what do you think of our boy batista do you think he is gonna be the best of all time or end up being meh i don't see how he can end up being bad but hey i've been surprised before so certainly not impossible so thank you very much for watching if you did uh please let me know what you think about the patch and the new hero i'm very interested to hear about it actually and uh elevator music playing in my mind thank you very much for watching if you did if you have any questions feel free to ask i'm more than happy to answer if you haven't already you can join our discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them or just ship posts with us if for some reason you enjoyed the video and managed to make it all this way through please like the video and subscribe for more content of middling quality in the future and i hope you find the video helpful